cool. Um, it's sort of messy. So like I said, this is about my parents. But the thing is, um, like I know this was partly my fault, but like I don't know much about um, them, like like where they came from, and like as a result, I don't know about much about where I came from. And um, I've been trying to. I was just thinking about why exactly I wrote this piece, like why I I feel like I need to keep writing about it. And I guess one because I'm angry <laughs> because um, I don't. First of all, I like I don't understand how hard it was for them to come here, and that I wasn't aware of it for so long. And also, I feel like I need to get it out because now that I know, and I just I need to understand everything. So, yeah, um, that'll make sense if you hear the piece. I hope. <laughs> um, okay, so yeah. I'm trying to understand why you were the way you were. You were scared. I always compared you to other mothers, lax rules, smart smiles, advice in hand. They were so gentle, and you were so scared. Scared I would find you inadequate. Scared I would uncover the sense of confusion you've always felt here. You were scared to let me do anything because you did not want to uncover what it was you did not know. We live from inside your paranoia and inside your world. But we are not where you grew up anymore. And I was never there. Seventh grade. I wanted to shave my legs. But you were immediately opposed. You never had shaved your legs. And you didn't see why I had to shave mine. Fights over and over. Drawing what you knew around you like a cloak. I took it from you to never venture outside of my comfort zone because the only defense I learned from you was anger and I couldn't sustain any more than yours. I tried to call you out for a fear that I had too and we both hid behind anger. It was the only thing we could agree upon. How was I to know that asking for something I thought was so simple, so normal, so culturally ingrained would cause you to burst? I did not know you were a pump to my heart, but I learned to sustain it without you. I learned to sustain it off of blood already fallen. If you cut up your legs and they bleed all over, it's your fault. It's too dangerous and you can't do it, but do it if you want to. It's your fault if you mess up. How was I supposed to know what I could and could not do when you would not let me try? You didn't want their norms to clot in my wounds, to stick to my skin, and eventually become the scabs I hid under. You knew you couldn't get to me there. You knew you couldn't hide there, too. Your wounds were always fresh, and they were always reopening, and you did not understand why no matter what you did, no matter how hard you tried, no matter how passively you yielded to me or how aggressively you yelled, I always struck back. I had been trained in the condition of fighting back because I always felt myself in question, always felt myself in danger. I felt so acutely the presence of my blood in my veins because I was always reminded that it was not mine, it was yours. Blood is thicker than water and I had yours. I did not know how to tell you that the rush of blood to my chapped, to my chapped tired lip was because you had fought back. You did not tell me what America told you to tell me, and you fought back. So other kids told me my hairy legs meant you never should have had me in the first place. That was a fucking disappointment to you and my family, and that I did not belong with those who had worked so hard to fit in. I wanted to feel safe, but you thought I just wanted to fit in. You called me ungrateful because you thought I was letting them fit me in. Maybe I was but I was just scared. Was this normal? Was this supposed to be normal? I sustained this normality by always blaming you. Things were already tough, but I made it harder. I blamed everything on you. You did not know the norms of this country, but I have fairly held you to them. You did not fit into them, and I blamed you. I wanted too much. I wanted to travel, I wanted to go to concerts, I wanted to be able to drive on the highway without having to sneak out and teach myself. I wanted to see the same movie more than once without hearing that it was a waste of your money, apply to out-of-state colleges without hearing that the application fees were too much money.
money, wanted to attend pre-college programs and go on school-sponsored trips abroad without hearing that it costs too much. We can't afford it. Why haven't you grown out of it yet? Why haven't you grown out of expecting what you can't have? I never knew what it was normal to expect. I was American culture overtaking. I couldn't talk to you about much because you didn't understand. I was pretension on crack. I touted my knowledge about American politics and US history because it made me feel accomplished. Learning about distant wars made it easier to ignore the one inside myself. You couldn't tell me, didn't tell me, about your personal wars until I made you angry enough that it was easy to believe that I was the only, that the only war you had ever fought was against me. I wonder if that made it easier. I wonder if having a target made it easier. My time in this country was too easy. I had assimilated too easily. I had died too easy. Aggressive individualism meant I had to kill the parts of you and me that still fueled a war, and who I thought I should be, and who I was told I should be, and who actually defined me. I had cut off the blood supplier to my heart, so I learned to absorb dead blood as compensation. Not knowing where I came from was a war too real. It was a war too alive, and I did not know how to live it. I did not know how to tell you I was scared because you never showed any fear. But how could I expect you to? How could I expect you to be so vulnerable when you were always under attack? You were so brave. This foreign land was always making you be brave. But I was always under attack too. Neither of us knew how to be brave for each other because there was always so much fear. I am just trying to breathe in a space pushing me out. Maybe it's too ragged and maybe it's too much, but maybe that's all you and I know to do. I'm sorry that that is all you and I know to do.